So I recently converted all my Fluent forms over to using the native form element inside of Bricks Builder. I was able to uninstall Fluent forms, get rid of jQuery from my website. My website is loading a lot faster now, not just because of that, but I was doing this as like a big optimization project on my website. And what I wanna do is share some of the things that I learned by going and creating quite a few forms inside of Bricks Builder because there's some things that didn't really work out or allowed me to build forms very quickly, but I could see long-term it was going to be very hard to manage. And I think I've found a really good, easy and simple way to manage all the forms that I create inside of Bricks Builder. And I wanna share that in this video. Just as a side note, if you do want to go and see some of the things that I did to speed up my website, you can go to my YouTube channel and go to the community tab. Go down, I only have two posts there, but the first one ran through some of the things that I did to speed up my website. Uh, so I won't go into it too much here, but it was basically setting up a CDN uh, for just my images. Then we have Cloudflare APO uh, for page caching, and I swapped over from WP Rocket to Flying Press. And uh, I have some other tips and tricks there in this post here. So that's really what I was doing, just trying to speed up my website. And then I was like, you know what, the forms which we're about to look at, they're so simple on my website. Why am I using Fluent Forms for these when Bricks Builder can do it? So I gave it a go and I, yeah, I think the form element inside of Bricks Builder is very powerful. And I wanna show you how to best use that in this video today. So I wanna first show you where I have forms on my website and some of the things that they do so that everything that we do in today's video makes sense. So if we go to the homepage and go down a little bit, you can see I have an opt-in form here for a lead magnet for a 21 day email course that I'm working on. So that's form one. Now, if we go to the footer of the website, we also have this one over here, which is for the same email course. So you know, from a management perspective, it'd be good just to have that one form and I insert it in two different places on my website. But then if we go up a little bit as well and I go to a blog post, and we go to, let's say this one here, which is what we're doing today. And I go down a little bit. You'll also notice that throughout my blog post, I have this here, which is an in post call to action. And it's for the 21 days email course. And the last one that I wanna show you is if we go to my newsletter page and go down, I also have the call to action there to be getting the email course as well. So this would be the fourth place. And this one's interesting because it's not actually it's a bricks form that I'm gonna show you how to add inside Gutenberg content up here, but we're gonna look at that at the end, how you'd go and do that. It's very easy to do if you do what I show you in today's video. But the main thing here is that I have this same form across many parts of my website. And so you don't really just wanna go out and make the same form four different times because at any point in the future, let's just say I wanna go and add a name field here and start collecting someone's name. I would have to go and edit four different forms and add that field in. Definitely don't wanna do that, but there is a way where we can just go and create this form once and then put it into multiple places on our website. And I'll show you how I have that set up in my website. So if we go back to my dashboard and then under bricks and templates, you can see that I've started creating templates here that are the type section and I'm just writing form hyphen and then what the form does. And if we open these up, so this is the email course that we just looked at. I also have a contact us form, but let's just stick to the email course here. So I'm gonna go edit with bricks and here we are. And this is a template inside my footer. So just ignore that. The only thing inside this template is one form element. And so I go ahead and I add the email field and the submit, join the wait list. The custom actions here, I have a custom action and then a redirect. And this is really important as well. Uh, we're gonna touch on this in just a second, but if you're going out and wanting to do any custom actions after a user submits this form, so in a second, I'm gonna show you how I have this set up. So when somebody completes this form here, I get the form data and send it using a webhook into my CRM. So if you're going out and doing anything custom, it's going to be a lot easier to manage that custom code if you're only trying to trigger that custom code based on one form ID versus four separate form IDs that really are doing the same thing. So now that we have a template here with just our form element, I want to point out that it's not in any sections, it's not in any containers, you really just want to have this form element here because this is a template and when we go and insert this template into our design, we can just insert it into sections and containers at that point. So you don't really wanna have any padding or margins around this here. So with that done and noting that we only have one form element inside this template, 
if we go back to our templates here, notice how for every template, we get a shortcode here. And so the way that we can start thinking about form management, if we do it by adding each form into its own separate bricks template, is that this shortcode here really outputs this form. And same with this, this shortcode outputs that form. But then also, if we go into a page, so I go to my home page and we go edit with bricks, and then we go down to where I have this form here. This is a template element. And here for the template element, I've selected my form. So the way that we can think about this here when we're inside a bricks builder is whenever I wanna add a form, I add the template, select the form. So I can think of this template element as really just being for a form. So we have the short code that outputs just a form. And then we have this template element where we can select our form and that's just outputting the form. And that gives us a lot of flexibility because now if we ever wanna update this form, all we need to do is update that template and it will update wherever we've inserted a template element and selected that form. And it will also update wherever we've gone and added this short code across our website. So we're gonna go ahead and run through setting this up now. And I'm gonna show you the benefits from going and adding this to an actual website. So here is a staging website that I've created where I've cloned my website and I've removed the forms from the front end. So if we have a look down here, I've got rid of the form there. And if we go down into the footer, the forms removed from there. If we go to the newsletter page and go down, I've removed the form from there. And then also if we go to a blog post, and then if we go to our list of blog posts and I go down into this one, set a bricks builder template using PHP. Uh, which I'm gonna be making a video on. I think it's just a very big video, so I haven't had time to do it, but the blog post is there. If we go down and find the impost call to action, which is here, you can see I've removed the form from there. So let's go ahead and create a template with our form in there, and then go and add that template to all these different pages in our website, and then we'll customize that form. And in doing all this, you'll see why this is just such a good system to adopt for managing your forms with Bricks Builder. So let's go to the dashboard. So here under bricks and templates, you can see I have this template here. It's a section type, so I'll go edit. So you can see the type is section over here. I've just updated it and I've called it form email course. If we go edit with bricks. So inside this template, you can see we have a form element. Uh, it has two fields here and then it has a submit button. So that's really all we need to look at at this stage. So let's go ahead and insert this template across our website. So let's go back to our homepage and I'll go edit with bricks and I'll go down and I wanna add it here. So I'm gonna click into there. I'm gonna search for my template element, add that in. And then here I'm gonna search for form email course and put that in there and we can see it's there. And we can add a margin top here just like that and click save. Now if we preview this on the front end, so if we go down, you can see there it is there. Now let's add it to our footer. So back here in bricks under templates, if I go and have a look at my footer template and we go edit with bricks, you can see inside my footer template, I've designed this locally inside this template, but then for this call to action section, it's a template itself. So let's go ahead and edit that template. And you can see it's called section email course bricks form. So back here under bricks and templates, let's go section email course bricks form, edit with bricks. And then here, let's go ahead and add our form element. So it's gonna be the template, so add that in. And then here we will select form email course like that. Now again, we need to add a margin here, but I just really wanna stress that it's just gonna be a lot less problematic if you set your margins for the actual forms wherever you insert the template into the page. I would definitely recommend not editing the actual form element here because even though we've added this form in two places on our website right now and we needed to add margin top to both of them, there's gonna be instances where we don't need to add it. So it's just gonna be always better to add it uh, here for the template. So let's go ahead and go style, layout, and then here I'll do that there and go save. So back on the home page, there's that first form. We'll go to the bottom here and reload the page. And there's that form there. So let's go up and do our, uh, let's do our articles now. So we'll go to the blog post. We'll go to this one here and we'll go and find it again. So here it is there. So this, if I go back to bricks and templates, that is my in section in post email course. So I'll go edit with bricks. 
And then here we'll add the form under this. So I'll go up to here and go template, add that in. And then here we will select the form email course. So with that done, let's save this. And then back here, we will reload. And now we have our form added there. Now the last place we needed to add it is on the newsletter page. So here, so we're gonna add it at the bottom here. Now this is built with Gutenberg. So I didn't design this using Bricks Builder. So to add the form, we're gonna go to edit opt-in page, which is just the post type that I'm using here. And then at the bottom here, we need to somehow output our Bricks form inside that template into Gutenberg content. And the way that we do that is by going to Bricks and templates, and then here form email course, we're gonna use the short code. So I'm gonna copy that. And then we'll go back to here and I'll add a short code element like that. We'll paste that in there and then we click update. Now, if we view our opt-in page and go down, you can see our bricks form is now output there. So now that we've covered the system of going and adding bricks builder forms across our website by using a forms element inside a template, I now want to go through and just pretend we're managing the website and we need to make changes to this form. I want to go through a couple of different scenarios that you'll probably need to do with your forms in your own website. And in doing this, you'll be able to see why the system is just so easy to maintain long term. So for example, the first thing that we need to do here is you're probably at some stage going to have forms across your website that you need to go and add extra fields to. So let's just say we wanted to start collecting the person's name here. So the way that we would do that is we would go into our templates, form email course, edit with bricks. And then here we would go and add a new form field and it would be a text. And then here we could write first name and placeholder your, your first name like that. And we'll leave it as not required. And then we're gonna drag it to be the first field like this. So let's go ahead and save that. And now back here on our newsletter page, if I reload that, so you can see there's been that new field output on our form there. If we go to the home page and go down a little bit, that's showing there as well. If we go to the footer, that's updated there as well. And then also uh, basically anywhere we have that form, we can edit it in one place. It updates for every instance of that form in our website. It's no shocker. That's obviously just so much easier to manage forms instead of them being separate forms inside a Bricks Builder. Now, the next thing that I want to show you in terms of maintainability is what I actually had to do for my own website. So here on my live website, if we go to my Bricks Builder templates, so we'll go to the dashboard and then here under Bricks and Templates, we'll go down to Form Email Course. If we open that up, if I click on this form and we collapse that and open up the actions, you can see that when somebody submits this form, I trigger a custom action and then I redirect the user. And if we open this up, I redirect them to this URL here. And the way that Bricks Builder works is it's sequential. So if I trigger a custom action that runs and then I redirect. So this custom action here, if you've never used it before, it allows you to trigger a custom PHP function to do whatever you wanna do with this form data. And so what I'm doing is I'm getting the person's data from this form and I'm sending it into my CRM or my email automation software. And so the plugin that I use to be my CRM to do my email marketing, it's a WordPress plugin. It's called Funnel Kit. I highly recommend everyone check it out. If you go to my website under reviews and you go down to funnel kit automations and have a read there at what it does, it's a very in-depth tutorial, but it's basically like active campaign inside of WordPress. It's built with React, so all the admin pages load super fast. But it's basically, this is what I needed to get my form data from Bricks Builder and the forms and send it in to here. And there's not a native integration. So the way that I needed to do it is using webhooks. So if we go to my admin area, so here under Funnel Kit Automations, which is the plugin, and then Automations, I have this double opt-in email course. So if we click into this, so you can see the way that this automation triggers is when a webhook event is sent to a specific URL. So if I click on this here, and because this is my live webhook URL, I blurred it out. So this URL here, I can send data from my Bricks form to this URL using that custom action, which I'm gonna show you in a second. And then once data is received to this URL, FunnelKit, the CRM, is able to process it and do things. 
So the way that this works is I can send my bricks form data to that webhook URL and that triggers this automation. So with that data, we get the email field. So from the form here, this email becomes the contacts identifier. So in my CRM, that would be their email. So I create a contact here. And if we click into this, you can see I map in the CRM, the email field goes to the form field from the Bricks form, the contact email. So I create the contact with that email address. And then if we go down a little bit, I add a tag that they completed my email course form. And then after that, I send them an email. And then if they click the link in that email, they've confirmed they wanna be subscribed. And then I subscribe them to my email list inside of FunnelKit and then they exit the automation. So knowing that I needed a way to get my Bricks form data to be sent over to this webhook URL. So I document how to do that in this blog post here, Bricks Builder form data to FunnelKit automations, but it's using this function here. So we use the custom action that Bricks supplies us. So this is Bricks form custom action. And this custom action, remember, if we go back to our form, and we go back to here under actions, the action once somebody submits a form is custom and then we redirect them. So this custom is what this is doing here, the custom action hook that Bricks gives us the ability to do things with. And you can see what this code basically does is we get the form fields, get the form ID. And if the form ID of the form that was just submitted is the ID that I want to send into FunnelKit, if that matches, then we get the data from the Bricks form and we send it to that webhook URL that then triggers our automation and then adds them to the mailing list. And we do that using curl down here, but it's sort of besides the point. The main thing was that I need to, needed to go and trigger this custom action based on a form ID. And so you can imagine if I had that same form that needed to send its data to that funnel kit webhook URL, if I had four different instances of that, I would need to check four different form IDs here. But because I had the same form in just one template and then added that template across my website, I can just look for that one form ID. So as you're going out and building your website and it becomes more complex and it grows and you need to do more custom stuff, it's gonna be a lot easier to manage if you're only trying to look for one form ID versus multiple. So I thought that was just a good example of trying to future-proof yourself um, and not and trying not to make things more complex than they need to be. And yeah, it's not apparent that you can use Bricks templates to just add a form element. And uh, once I started doing that, it just made my life a lot easier and I thought I would share it in this video here today. Now, let me know in the comments below, were you already doing this to manage your forms? And is there another way that you're using Bricks templates to make managing your website a lot easier? Uh, today, we looked at forms inside templates. Is there something else that just templates make a lot easier? Definitely let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'm just starting to play around with this stuff a lot more. And yeah, I'm just, I'm sure there's a lot of different stuff that I haven't worked out yet. So if you have any tips or things that you've learned that you think you need to share with anyone, definitely drop a comment below. All the blog posts mentioned in today's video will be linked in the description below under today's video. Definitely go and check out my blog. I'm posting there very regularly. And also if you are interested in getting my email course when it launches, that's gonna be there. You guys know where it is from today's video under the newsletter tab on my homepage in the CTA, basically everywhere in every blog post, there is a link that you can basically join the mailing list and get notified when that goes live. It's very slow to start. I'm doing it in between other things that I'm doing here, like the YouTube channel and blogging and stuff like that. We'll get there eventually. But yeah, definitely head on over, check that stuff out. And don't forget to watch these two videos here. This one here is the one that YouTube thinks that is going to benefit you the most. I probably start with this one and then watch this one here.